Is all right. Protocol. That's what we want to talk about. Okay. Basically, I'm going to just review. Protocol, what is that? What is protocol? The word protocol actually means the first leaf of the book. The first leaf of the book. And we really have been doing a lot of conferencing around scrolls, angels de delivering scrolls, who is worthy to read the scroll. Behold, behold the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to um, receive that scroll, to open that scroll, to read that scroll. Uh, that's kind of where we've been at for this last year, I would say. Um, why are we in that place? What is so interesting and so important about scrolls? Scrolls or books or how, what, how, whatever you want to call it is how God actually has his word written. It's a legal document. It has authenticity and credibility in the spirit realm. God actually sends an angel with a scroll a lot of times to announce things to earth. Okay? Yes? And so, when you see a scroll coming, God is speaking out of government. All right? So, what has happened is a bill is passed in the parliament of heaven, in the councils of God. And when the bill is passed, just like in an earthly government, and remember, all things that are natural are based on what is already supernatural. Hello? First the spirit and then the... Hello? You can talk in the natural, okay? So the fact that we have governments is because God also has a government. So the reason we have government is not to be boring, but because we are based on a pattern out of heaven. The fact that the things that we do is all squashed and squiggly and weird is not because it's God's fault, but because we are fallen. And we've got some things to sort out. Yes. The fact that we have law courts okay, and a judiciary, a judicial system, lawyers, attorneys, and advocates is based on on, on the heavenly pattern. So everything we have actually came out of the spirit realm. Yes? And the way that um, hell is going to be structured, do you know that hell will also have a court system? Yes. And court is also going to have, I mean, hell is also going to have a parliamentary system because it's organized. It's not like you open a door and a whole pile of demons swarm out like ants and then they swarm back in when you press doom. You know, ant spray or something, and you go, I bind you, I bind you, and I bind you. All right? They get released because of legal documentation, the handwriting of ordinances that are written against us gives them the, the paperwork. They have to have papers. They have to have a bunch of papers to come against you. Somewhere, somebody has released a curse on you, and it is written on a piece of paper in hell. There is handwriting written against you. Yes? Are you with me? So there's demonic scrolls. There is heavenly scrolls. How are we doing? When the accuser comes to court... Or to God's throne room, what does he do? He accuses you. Because he has you on record. Hello? So he's going to come before God and say, oh, she wants a blessing. Is that a fact? Okay, let's just now, as, as Yemi said, okay, she's serving mammon, point one. Point two, made a vow she isn't kept. Point three. Are you with me? Do I go further? L L White Lie today on the phone says, I will be slightly late. Big lie. Because she knows she's going to be at least two and a half hours late. 
Point four, speeding. Point, do you want me to go on? Okay, so <clears throat> you are being followed. Tell the person next to you, you are being followed. <laughs> in the spirit realm, everything you do is monitored, photographed, and put in a file. You're an important person. You know, the, the security services... <clears throat> of hell, have your ID documentation, has your picture, knows where you ministered, what you said, what you didn't say, how you said it, where you said it, da 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 da. Got it? Say there's a file about you. The problem is there's one in hell and there's one in heaven. <laughs> so we've got. Angels who are called the recording angels according to Daniel 2 and 4. Okay? So every time you open up your big mouth and say the wrong stuff, what happens? It says in Daniel that the watchers or the holy ones make a decree over this king because he boasted in his own strength and in his own ability. And by the decree of the watchers, which means they had a council, which means they had a court case, which means they brought out papers and said, okay, this guy needs to eat grass like a beast for how many years? Seven years. Bye-bye. Yes? True? So do you think if they were doing that in the Old Testament, it's not happening now? Hello, are you awake? Thank you. <clears throat> it's happening now. So there, there's, there's, there's legal processes going on between heaven and hell all the time. Okay? So we know about Daniel's angel. Daniel's angel has got to bring through the breakthrough, right? Yes? And so what happens in coming... The court in heaven says yes, and then what? The angels are fighting through. So there's a demonic side that says, hey, we can't let that thing happen. All right? So there's a place, and Duncan Williams says it like this. He says that if you stop praying on day 20... The angel doesn't get through to your city and to your house because demonic visa immigration control agents are going to stop your angel. And without your prayers and without your intercession, they're going to be held up at the border. Okay? So your, your answer is on its way, angel bringing, angel bringing through, but you've got to keep praying until... Because if you stop just before your angel lands at Oliver Tambo Airport and goes and gets up to the immigration and says, okay, and they say, no, 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 they've stopped praying, there's no visa for you. Yes? Yes. So we are continu continually in a contention to get our prophetic word that we're getting for our nation or for our region or for wherever to get right through to us where we are. So the journey from here to here sometimes is fraught with demonic agencies that are battling. And the demonic agencies that are battling are going to use their agents on earth to battle us. Yes? And those agencies are anybody that is against God. Hello? Right. So, you could be a born-again Christian, and in a moment of a fit of rage, you could be helping the enemy against your brother or your sister because of the way you behave. 
So then Satan doesn't need a bona fide witch. He just needs you in disobedience. He just needs you in rebellion. You make the best witch. Because you're already in a church, you're already in a ministry, you're already somewhere involved where you're saying you're a Christian. Hello? Yes? So somewhere along the line, we have all committed this sin and frustrated the purposes of heaven. Would you agree? If you don't agree, I'll lay hands on you so you can get better insight. So, that's what it looks like, okay? And um, <clears throat> protocol means that we have to put in place some rules so that we can minimize people being on the side of God's adversary accidentally or without thinking about it or in a fit of rage or whatever, so, rules are there so that we do not dishonor the Lord. We do not do something rash that's going to cause a whole chain of events that is going to help the enemy to frustrate the answers coming through from heaven and the anointings that need to land. Okay? So, in the African culture... They have something they call in anthropology joking relationships. And what that means is when you actually get married into another tribe, okay, in certain tribes you were not actually allowed to actually address your mother in law a certain way. Okay? Can all the African people wave at me because they know what I'm talking about? These white people, we're going to have to help them, okay? So, you weren't allowed to really speak to your mother-in-law or, or kind of look at her directly in the face and you had to sit in a certain place and you had to wear a certain, you were given certain clothes when you were made part of the family and you were told this is what you're wearing and this is where you're going to sit and this is how you're going to behave and you're going to cook this food but you're not going to do that. Okay? And you were instructed as to how to be the wife and fit into the family. Yes? Yes. Now, if you need to know, all our black brethren can tell you how this works. This is what they call in anthropology, joking relationships. So there was a protection so that you did not insult your mother-in-law or your father-in-law or your family. Because this is where all the dissensions and the problems happen in families. With the in-laws. And uh, in white families, we joke about it. And when you go to a wedding, the biggest joke is about the mother-in-law. Because we don't have the buffers in place not to speak dishonorably about our mother-in-law and our father-in-law. Okay? Because in African culture, they recognize those relationships could bring major problems. So what do they do? They tell you what you may or may not do in those relationships to protect your marriage in the end. So the protocol is about the protection of the relationship. The primary relationship that you got into covenant of marriage for. Is that good? How am I doing? So... We are getting married to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we have to learn how to dress, how to behave, what we may and may not say to our mother-in-law and our father-in-law. Now, who's that? Let's just say it like this. How about spiritual mothers and fathers? Okay? How about that? We have spiritual mothers and fathers, and there are certain laws that govern the way we talk to them, speak about them behind their backs. Hmm? 
We repented this morning about we don't speak well about our leaders. We don't pray for our president. We, we don't pray for our leaders in our churches, etc., etc. We don't pray for leaders, period. We just pray for me, myself, and me. Okay? And the problem is, because of that, we are picking up all kinds of issues... And you heard uh, Apostle Adeyemi today saying that if you do not pray for your leaders correctly, and when your leaders look like Noah and they're drunk and naked, and you criticize them, you will reap exactly what you've just criticized. You will repeat that on, an, on the next level. Because your leaders are going before you, and what they're experiencing, you will one day have to go through. Okay? Did you hear that? That was very good. And so, in the spirit realm, we have those around us that have certain rankings. And you know what? You can't choose your relatives. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. So, congratulations. You've now got married or are getting married or engaged to a really much larger family than your own in-law problem at home. Because look around you. You've got to love all kinds of weird and wonderful and strange looking people. Look around you. They're all gorgeous, says Lance. You're all beautiful. I just want to tell you the best bunch of people I know. You are gorgeous. You're the most tenacious intercessors. Uh, I tell you what, you're the bulldogs of the universe when it comes to pushing through. You're it. Okay, you're A1. You're phenomenal. You're the best givers. You're the best everything. I just want to commend you. I want to commend you on your service. I want to commend you on your obedience. I want to commend you that when that song said stand up, we had all these people stand up. But I want to tell you what, we're coming into a place of training and people are responding and I'm commending you. I, I said to Apostle Adeyemi, I said, you don't understand my guys here that come to this conference. This is not your normal run-of-the-mill church crowd. If you tell them you're praying for businessmen, intercessors, no. They can be anything, so they have no problem. They run forward and they're businessmen. Then, <laughs> then they'll go sit down. And then you say, you want to pray for people to get pregnant. Then you'll have another whole lot that will be pregnant for other people. And they have a problem. They'll be pregnant too. I'm telling you. We're another bunch of people. Then you want to pray for healing. We'll all get healed. We'll come back into the prayer line. We have no shame. We'll be responsible for everything and will come to receive everything because we understand who we are. We're intercessors and we are everything. Yeah, it's good. I never have a problem. You know, I say to my speakers, I said, you don't have to come push these people. They're pushing you already. You haven't even arrived in the country. They're already praying for you. They already knows what, know what's going on in your house. They're praying for you. They're pulling on you and you're gifting Months before you even arrive. So I'm proud of you for all of those things. But still, what I'm trying to say is, we have to understand there is a, a behavior that we have to come to to protect our relationships, firstly, and to protect one another's integrity. Okay? Also, the reason that you have cultural relationships anthropologically is you are, are taking people and mentoring them through what they call rites of passage. Okay? So you're treating a baby a different to treating someone at puberty, to treating someone who's getting married, and they all have certain ceremonies and certain rituals which we know are mostly demonic. But still, there are principles that you need to learn. There are certain things you do when you go to a wedding that you don't do when you go to a funeral. Okay? When you go to a wedding, you're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to dress up. You're supposed to celebrate. Whether you like the person or you don't like the person, you're supposed to bring a gift. Whether you like the person or you don't like the person, you bring them a gift. That's part of... Yes, that's part of behavior that governs going to a wedding. Now, if you go to a funeral and you're all happy, 
and you bring a gift, okay, and you wear very loud, happy clothes, it's just not appropriate. It, 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 it dishonors the people because they are in mourning. Okay? You're supposed to look sad. Or concerned at least. Okay? You're not supposed to go, I'm so happy your relative died. It just doesn't sound good. Congratulations, you just got rid of... It's not good. It's kind of not etiquette. It's kind of not the protocol. It kind of doesn't fit. It's going to make you enemies for life. People might never want to talk to you again. No, they came and got drunk at the funeral. You know? Do you know what I'm saying? That starts family arguments forever. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. So, we are a family and we have to have protocol. Okay. Good. Fabulous. So, protocol means it's a set of rules that governs relationship between countries and organizations. In, in, uh, in the IT industry, the computer industry, it speaks about interfacing between systems. So for one system to talk to the other system, it needs pr the protocols in place. All right? So it's something that rules something. And the reason that it rules something is it's not about control Hello? It's not about telling you what you have to do. It's just that certain norms are understood. Understood behavior at a wedding is happy, smile, bring present. Okay? Protocol at funeral is cry, don't smile, do not bring present, do not wear very loud clothes. And in some cultures, bring food. And in other cultures, bring a lot of food. And in Indian culture, cook every night and eat with family. It just depends, you know. In the Greek culture, go to funeral, okay, eat with family. 40 days later, same story. A year later, same story. Yes? Are you with me? So every year... In African culture, slach the ox for everybody who died. Protocol, culture, that's how it works. All right. So in the kingdom, if everything in the natural was first in the spirit, we are looking for some behavior norms. We are looking for some cultural kingdom keys. So in the kingdom, there is culture. In, in the culture, there are rules. Yes? Okay. So there are rules. Okay? There are rules because there are mothers and fathers. There are fivefold ministers. There are gifts and charismata. Okay? Amo met me? Would you all like to jump up and down three times? No? Are we all right? We're not sleeping. Okay. Just checking. So, um, what happens is in the culture of the kingdom, there are norms and rules. Do you think that was our idea? No. It's God's idea. God has a way of protocol. You have to know how to go out and how to come in before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is a way to go out and there is a way to come in. All right? Zulu culture. When you're leaving the presence of King Goodwill Zwelantini, you may not turn your back on him. Is that correct? So you have to then walk backwards. Right? So you're leaving his presence, you leave like... That's culture. Why? Because if you turn your back on him, you're saying, I dishonor you. 
Now, anybody else who says bye and turns their back on you, you don't think about it. But in that culture, when you do that, what did you just say to this man? You said something very rude to him. Okay? And he will take it that you are being rude, or he will decide you are just stupid. You don't know how to behave. Okay? Which will mean that your credibility level goes down. Okay? Right. Now, why are we interested in protocol? Because we've just gone up to a higher level. And when you go and you deal with government, did you have government angels, government mantles, mantle, mantle, more mantles for jobs? Right? God is positioning certain people to speak to governments. God is positioning certain people in the church to speak to government. So we have got to come out of our independence and the way we do things, and we actually have to be credible to governments. And so you'll hear men so audible say very deliberately, when I speak, I don't add glory, hallelujah, and I don't speak like that very deliberately because I do lots of seminars for business people who are not born again, and I have a university, and etc., etc. Not that he's denying that he's a Christian, but he is aligning himself to speak into that world in the language that they will understand. So if you come in like a foaming intercessor, <laughs> And thus, 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 says, 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 says the Lord. It's just not going to fit. Because in that world, it doesn't work. You see, you must be able to go into that world and say, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to bring to your attention X, Y, Z, whatever, and then go to church and go, that's fine. You need to multitask. Okay? You don't need to go to work and scare the living daylights out of everybody. Okay? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying don't be a witness. I'm saying choose how you behave. Look at your environment. You do not rush out after this conference and go to your church where no one has seen anybody travail, throw yourself in front of the pulpit and start pushing <laughs> on a Sunday morning. It is it's not appropriate. You'll have people who've never been to church before. Maybe they're going to get saved today and they've, ne you know, and then now they think, oh my God, what kind of a weird black is this? What kind of a weird place is this? If I come here, will I be running forward and screaming and with my legs up like that? I'm not coming. You understand? Certain things are just not appropriate in certain places. And it doesn't mean you are more or less anointed. It doesn't mean you can't express yourself. You must know when to do what. That is protocol. It governs when you do what. Okay? And when and what are not necessarily at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I feel led, I'll do whatever I please. Hello? So, this is how um, Michael Pitt says it. He says, um, if someone says uh, the steps of a, a righteous man are what? Ordered by the Lord. He says, we like that scripture until we get an order. <laughs> then when we get the order, we want to know who is this person who dares to tell me anything. But I just said what? The steps of a righteous man are what? But I don't want to be given one. So now how am I going to do the righteous steps if there's no order? No, but I'll just feel led. So there's lots of lead here. If anybody would like to get a feel of a piece of lead, we can organize it. 
And we can organize it on your head. Any way you'd like to feel it, how you'd like to feel it, we can make it available. Okay. It doesn't mean that. All right? What it means is, when you are led, <laughs> you have to have someone who's your commanding officer give you an instruction. Right? Okay? And you must know where you march in the army. If you're a soldat and you're not a corporal, ne? if you're a soldier and you're not a corporal, you are going to listen to the order. Okay? Attention! You do that. Stop! Move! March! Left, right! You have to do what you're told. That's protocol in the kingdom. Because if we are going to go and move to do anything, we have to move according to the orders that are given. The problem is, we all who have the Holy Spirit don't need anyone to tell us anything because we all have the same Holy Spirit. And so no one needs to tell me anything about anything ever. Because it's just me, myself, and the Holy Spirit. And anyway, you know, there's a, a, a scripture in 1 John 2 and 27, and it says something like this. It says, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do, you do not need that anyone should teach you. Right? But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true, it is not a lie, etc., etc. So good. So no one needs to teach you. Is that true? Is the scripture. It says no one needs to teach you. The anointing is going to teach you. So why are we in this conference? No one needs to teach you. You should have known all of this stuff already. Didn't you know all this stuff? Didn't you know everything Pat Francis told you? Didn't you hear it all before? So what is the scripture actually saying if it's saying no one needs to teach you because you just know it all? That's not what it means. It means don't be deceived, little children, because I taught you how to discern the difference. Go read the context, okay? And don't go quote that every time you don't want anybody to tell you anything. Are you with me? All right. And so, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 12 and 7 says this. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each for the profit of all. Yes? The manifestation of what? The Holy Spirit. Okay? So this is the same Holy Spirit that is given to everyone, and everyone can operate in a gifting. Correct? Everybody correct? So the charismatic gifting says that everybody is going to speak in a gift. Somebody's going to have tongues and somebody's going to prophesy and somebody's going to have this and that and the next thing. Is that correct? But it says the same Holy Spirit who is in all of these things. So when... I say to Andre, please move that chair from there to there. And I'm running this conference. And he says something to me like this. Let me pray about it. I do not feel led right now to move the chair. What is wrong with the statement? I am the head of the house of Ariel Gate. I tell him to move the chair. He tells me he doesn't feel led. And then he's going to tell me he's now doesn't make, is not really sure what the Lord is really saying to him personally. So he can't take direction from me at all about moving the chair, the whole chair, from there to there. A to B. So he doesn't feel led right now. And I must just understand that he can also hear the Holy Spirit. You understand? What is wrong with this picture? 
I'll tell you what's wrong with this picture. We are going to go nowhere with an attitude like that because everybody thinks they can have an opinion like that. That's fantastic. We'll never have a conference. We'll never have a speaker to listen to because you are God yourself all by yourself. Have a nice life. All right. So the fact that you're in this conference, you must recognize that you need someone to teach you. Congratulations. Tell the person next to you, congratulations. Okay. So maybe there's some people that know a few things that you don't know. Isn't that a good thought? And in fact, I deliberately go around the world looking for people who know more things than I do, who are more anointed than me, who can move in things I can't move in, because I need them. Because you need them. And we need them to break us through. Okay? Now that you've met our speakers, you will not know what you did without the information before. You got it this week. You're going to go, how did I live without knowing those things? Because you see, every joint supplies. Everybody, God has called to come and bring their gifts. And it's a very important thing. So in the scripture, it says this. It says, um, there are diversities of gifts, verse 4, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Verse 6, there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So let me just explain something to you. If your gift is not serving the person next to you, what is it doing? Hello? You want to grow your gift, you want to grow your ministry so that you can be famous, have your card, give it to every speaker that you see in this place. So that everybody can know that you are somebody. But I want to tell you what. If you are not, your gifting is not profiting the house and the people around you, then I don't know what you are doing. Because people do not have the concept to come and serve. And bring your gift. And bring what you have. So that it will profit all. Okay? So tell the person next to you, you are supposed to profit me. Okay, 4 to 1 in verse 8 is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit to another. Hello, did you say, did you see the word one? To one is given. Did you, did you see one? One. Not two, three, four, or all. It says one. Say one for me. One. Okay. And to another, faith by the same Spirit. Another, gifts. Another, the working of miracles. Another. Okay? Everybody got that? Not everybody is holding everything. We need everybody with their gifts because we all together have all. But apart, you are one and you have one thing and maybe two. And maybe a few more. But you're not going to have the whole thing. Okay? Yes. So those are the charismata gifts. Verse 11, but one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of this one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Okay, very good. Those are the charismata gifts. Now, Verse 27, it says, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Here we go. The apostle is saying, are all apostles? Are all apostles? Are all prophets? You know, God has appointed these gifts and they call the Domata gifts or the ruling gifts. And basically, it doesn't even say one and another. It says he's appointed. So did he ask your opinion? No. So there are people who have been set in place. They are appointed in place whether they like it or not or you like it or not. God chose. Okay? And the charismatic gifts are supposed to operate under the domain of the demata, the ruling gifts. Okay? Otherwise, you are out 
of protocol. So it takes a ruling gift to release a charismatic gift. Okay. And you'll, you'll see some of this stuff out of Michael Pitts' teaching called um, Apostolic Order. And I'm just going to quote one of the things he says. He says something like this. He says, People are great when they are sinners and they've just got saved and they want to repent and they want to sort out their stuff. He says that when you find a problem with people is when they discover they're anointed. And now when they're anointed and they've got a voice, everybody must hear them. Because you just don't understand until I sing my song. You know, heaven's just not going to rock. Because you're just not releasing me in my gift. You know? And uh, then they discover they can see visions. So now, how can you tell them anything? Because they went to heaven. And they saw angel. You know? Shook hands with Paul. What are you going to tell them? I, what are you going to tell me? I've been to heaven. Have you been to heaven? I prophesy. Phenomenally. I can just do it at a drop of a hat. What are you going to tell me? I must move as I feel the Spirit leads me. Is it? And so we have this, this attitude when we find out how anointed we are. We are so anointed, we're dripping oil. They should start an oil factory. <laughs> and everybody must know it. So we'd spend our times telling everybody how anointed we are. But the issue is, what are you actually doing for the profit of all? A lot of people, when you speak to them, it's all about, this is what I'm doing. In my ministry, all the time, I'm fabulous. And I'm king of everything. Okay? It's an attitude. And it's really not so lacquer. So, <clears throat> what the Lord is looking for, is He's looking for a church that can operate governmentally. Which means we all understand our rank. We all understand what releases us spiritually as well as in the natural. Yes? So God is looking for us to come into a new understanding because he's about to put us to speak to natural governments. And when we speak to natural governments and we can't hold it together even in the church, he is, we are not qualified or credible. Okay? According to um, protocol governmentally, what happens is nations sign what they call an international understanding of protocol. So that when the ambassadors come from other countries, come to our country, they need to be greeted a certain way, spoken to a certain way. And I tried to say that last night. Their flag has to be flown a certain place, our flag another place. We greet them. We don't take to them to McDonald's to eat. Or Kentucky Fried Chicken. We will generally have a banquet for them. Okay? So if we walk up to the ambassador from China and, and we've got jeans that are just all ripped, you know, and we've got dreadlocks on, we say, hello, how's it from the president of South Africa? What would you like? Kentucky? Wimpy? Yeah, or Pizza Hut? Do you think the person's going to feel honored? It's not appropriate. It's not appropriate behavior. It's a not appropriate speech. It's not appropriate dress, etc., etc. And so all of those things count. What you say, what you wear, where you eat, the whole number when you are doing a protocol thing. Are you with me? So when you do all of that, and you don't do it correctly, you actually declare war. 
If you insult the person so badly, they can think any minute now South Africa is going to go to war with China. Okay? Yes. It's very, very serious. Because when you decide that you're going to name yourself and set yourself up in your own position and no one has appointed you, you just woke up in the morning and decide you're the apostle of the universe. Or you've just become a prophet, or you've just whatever. And there's no relationships around you. No one's released you. You are just it. Okay? What you will attract is the same level of warfare as that title has, but you will not have the anointing or the grace to deal with it. So you've just called a war onto yourself because of your lack of understanding and your lack of protocol. When you walk into somebody's home, you do not arrange their lounge furniture the way you like it. You don't criticize their house. You don't go into their fridge. You don't just drink their tea and coffee without asking them or being invited. And it would be considered very rude for you to go into their bedroom and start going through their clothes to see what they have in their cupboard. But for some reason in the church, we think we can put our nose into all kinds of places because I felt led. Hello? Are we doing okay? So now, we just want to say this. That as, as Ariel Gate, God has called us up higher. Okay? He's called us up higher, and so there is an issue of protocol.